A long, long time ago, if we were concerned with wedding myth and history here, we might perhaps say that this was the last century before Christ, but dates like that don't concern us here. So, a long, long time ago, in a faraway land, which likely resembled Greece, but again, myth reality contains no geography. A long, long time ago, in a faraway land, there was an island in the middle of the sea. And on this island, there was a small village. And this village, it had many names, but for right now, let's say it was called a delta. Now, a delta was like many of the fishing villages which came before it and after it, simple, provincial, isolated, full of rich personalities and emotional conflict. Day-to-day -day life was full and busy, but if you zoomed out just a little bit beyond the personal, you would get this eerie, peaceful sense that nothing much ever happened there. The boats went out in the morning and the boats returned at dusk. Babies born, elders died. Lovers quarreled, even betrayed, but then mended, or else they found other lovers to love. And as a whole, these personal dramas were of very little consequence, and a delta kept on being, well, a delta. Now, in a delta, on one, one day, just like any other day, into this bustling, changeless village, stepped two gods. Or perhaps they were there all along, it's really unclear. And today, we're going to say that these gods were named Zeus and Hermes, because I have a particular love of Hermeticism, but we might as well have just called them Jupiter and Mercury, or maybe even Rama and Hanuman, or Yahweh and Lot. These names, they never really mattered all too much. So, perhaps Zeus and Hermes were feeling of a particularly moralistic disposition that day, and they were trying to make some sort of godly point. Or perhaps the godly point was only invaded. Le perhaps the godly point was only invented later by storytellers. Maybe Ovid. Certainly not me. I'm not a moralizing storyteller. And the pair of gods was actually just feeling, you know, just a little bit peckish. They they needed a nosh. In any case. One day, Zeus and Hermes took the form of two beggars and decided that it would be a good idea to start knocking on doors asking for some food. And of course, as the story goes, they were not treated very kindly by most Adeltans who failed to see the divinity invisibly glowing underneath the rags. But they knocked on the door of Philemon and Bacchus, and uh, this elderly couple, they were, they were a bit kinder than the rest of the Adeltans, and they lived at the edge of the village, on a hilltop overlooking the sea, and they graciously welcomed the gods inside, the beggar gods. Their food was cheap and simple, but it was excellent. Tough bread with lightly fermented cottage cheese, bitter greens, weeds really, picked up the path on the hill, and wild strawberries, and lots and lots of homemade wine. Everything seemed quite ordinary. They invited strangers to their home all the time. But then Bacchus noticed that although their wine was being drunk, the pitcher she was pouring it out of, it never seemed to empty. It reminded her a bit of a story she had once heard from a previous traveler about a bush which burned but was never consumed. And she pondered this for a moment and then nearly dropped the pitcher because the glazed snake that was painted upon it, it started moving and it slowly reached around and began to consume its own tail. Philemon immediately recognized what was happening. Their guests were infinite beings, obviously, and he let out a cry of joy, and he started running around the cottage in a fervor. The goose, he cried, we must sacrifice the goose! The goose, meanwhile, in no mood to be sacrificed, started also running around the cottage in an equal further, squawking all the way until finally it settled on Hermes' lap. There's no need to sacrifice you today, said Hermes to the goose, in goose language, which didn't sound one bit like squawking. And then to the old couple he said, We want to thank you for your excellent hospitality. How can we show you our gratitude? Bacchus and Philemon looked at each other with dismay, baffled and humbled by this question from a god. But then their eyes locked, and after a moment of contact they said, for as long as something of ourselves remains in this world, we would like it to remain together. The gods nodded, and then they disappeared. Hermes is the god of transformation, but in this case the transformation happened slowly. 
Time passed. The old couple grew even older, and eventually came the time for ending. A word which the snake and the bush and the pitcher tell us actually means beginning. The goose eventually was sacrificed, but the couple remained. And as their cottage slowly decayed around them, the couple remained. And when sunlight began to pierce through the disintegrating thatch, it landed not upon ancient eyes and wrinkled skin, but green leaves and gnarled bark. And soon, through the rooftop, emerged two trees, their trunks and their roots completely intertwined. And to this day, these trees, not quite two, not quite one, grow quietly on the hilltop, gazing at the sea.